Hi, and welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith, and in this video, we're going to learn the three to five player game, Bus, designed by Joris Virzinga and Joram Dalman, and published by Capstone Games, who helped sponsor this video. Like any city, the one in this game is filled with people wanting to move about their day, from their homes, to their offices, to the pubs, and your well-planned bus route will get them where they want to be unless someone starts interfering with the space-time continuum. But like any good bus planner, we'll worry about that later. So join me at the table and let's learn how to play. To set up, first place the game board in the center of the play area. And if it's your very first time playing, you'll also have to attach this spinner to the board as well. Then set the five time stones on the spaces for them here next to the clock and point the hand of the clock towards the house symbol. Then set these 15 passenger tokens in a supply beside the board. To help organize some of the components in this game, I'm going to be using some game trays that I have, and if you'd like to pick up some for yourself, you'll find links for them in the description of this video. Then set a passenger token onto each of these four roundabouts that surround Central Park. In the color of their choice, each player takes 20 action markers, 25 line markers, 5 bus tokens, and a scoring disc which they'll set on the zero space of the victory point track here. Each player also puts one of their bus tokens at the top of the matching colored track in this area of the board. Randomly determine which player will go first and give them the start bus token. Then it's time for players to add the initial buildings and bus route line markers to the board. There are three different kinds of buildings represented by these tokens. Homes, offices, and pubs. People want to spend their days in the office, their evenings at the pub, and nights at home. And all these tokens you'll keep in a supply by the board. The game board shows named streets and crossings, which have a gray dot, and then numbered locations at those crossings where buildings can be placed. Starting with the first player and moving clockwise around the table, each person picks two buildings of their choice, which could include picking the same building twice and then puts them on any two different locations of the board marked with a one. After all of the players have added their buildings to the board, they now take turns adding line markers. Once again, starting with the first player and moving clockwise around the table, each person takes one of their line markers and puts it on a street of their choice anywhere on the board. I could even put it over here if I wanted to, but I think in this case I'll set it here. Players are even allowed to put these first lines onto streets that already have a line marker on them. But again, I think in this case the yellow player will go, let's say, here. Once everyone has set their first line marker on the board, then in reverse player order, starting with the last person who just placed their first line marker, and moving counterclockwise around the table, players expand their lines by adding a second marker onto a street that extends from one of the ends of their previously placed marker. So for example, the purple player here could extend from this end of their route, placing their line marker on any one of these five streets, or extend from this end onto either of these two streets. In this case, we'll have them go here. We'll learn more about the different rules for expanding your lines later, but you must follow those rules here as well. And that's the setup. Bus is a game all about getting passengers from where they are to where they want to be. As time goes by, passengers will leave their homes and go to work, leave their offices and go to the pub, and then leave the pubs to go back home. And you'll get points for getting them to their desired destinations. If you need a little help with this, you can even stop time itself, radically altering the space-time continuum to make your butt... Wait a second, what? Really? Huh. Yeah, actually that is something you can do in the game. Well, what do you know? The game is played over a series of rounds, each made up of two phases. In the first phase, starting with the first player, and then going clockwise around and around the table, players will take turns choosing actions. There are seven different actions, and each of them are identified here on the board. To choose an action on your turn, you place one of your action markers on an unoccupied space. Some actions can only be chosen by one player per round, which is shown by a single circle with a white dot while other actions can be taken multiple times by different players, or even the same players more than once. The first person to choose a multi-space action puts their marker on the A spot. The next marker placed here must go on to B, then C, and so on. 
Also notice that while some actions have the letters going in order from left to right, others are listed in reverse. But no matter the direction, you always place on A first and then B as explained. Players will take turns until each has placed at least two action markers. From that point on, on your turn, a player can choose to pass or continue by placing another marker. Anyone who does pass will be skipped over for the rest of this phase. And once everyone has passed, it's time for the second phase, resolving actions. You'll start at the top of the board with line expansions, resolving any markers it might have there, and then go to the next action and resolve its markers, if any, and so on until you've gone through all seven of the actions. Actions with more than one marker are always resolved from left to right, even if the markers were placed from right to left during the previous phase. So in a case like this, blue would resolve first, then yellow, and then blue again. When resolving actions, many depend on understanding a value known as the maximum number of buses. This is simply the largest number of buses owned by any one player. The higher that number is, the more powerful actions become for everyone. To check for this value, look at this area of the board and see which player has the greatest number of buses there and how many buses that is. At the start of the game, it's the same for everyone, so the maximum number of buses value is one. If it was later in the game and the tokens looked like this, the maximum buses value would be calculated as the amount of buses owned by the purple player because they have the most. So that maximum buses value is three. Later, if it looked like this, then the maximum number of buses value would become four. And remember, that value applies to everyone, not just the player who happens to be generating that value at this time. With that understood, now let's go through each of the actions one at a time and see how they're resolved. This is the line expansion action. The spaces here are in reverse alphabetical order, which, as we mentioned earlier, means that although this one was placed first, it will be resolved last. When resolving this action, it will allow you to add a certain number of your line markers to the board based on the letter that is under your action token. And the value assigned to that letter will be based on that maximum number of buses value that we talked about earlier. To help me explain this, I'm going to add two more buses to this area of the board, which will make the maximum number of buses value now equal to three. Whoever put their action marker on the A space will be able to add a number of their line markers to the board equal to the maximum number of buses value. So this action token would allow the blue player to add three of their line markers to the board. The player on B adds one less than that, so only two. A player on C adds one less than that, so one. And a marker here adds one less again, meaning they add nothing. Remember, you still resolve the tokens from left to right, but it's important to understand each token's value first, which is always the maximum bus value on A, one less on B, one less again on C, and so on. Knowing this may also give you some insight into the decisions you'll have to make when adding action tokens to the board. In a situation like this, it wouldn't have made sense for a player to have put their token here during the choose action step, as they would not have been able to add any lines to the board during this phase. And the blue player putting another marker here would have had to have decided whether or not using this action token was really worth it, knowing they'd only get to add one extra line. There is one last other rule to keep in mind here. If you have five players in the game, you add one extra line more than you normally would place when taking the line expansion action. So when this action marker is resolved, instead of placing three lines, they'd place four. The yellow player would place three. The blue player here would get to place two. And purple would get to place one. Something else to understand is that you must always fully resolve any action that you're taking. For example, in the case of placing lines, if the action would let you place three, then you must place three, if you're able. For example, if you ran out of lines, then you would be able to place fewer, but you would have to place as many as you could. Speaking of lines, let's talk about the rules for placing and extending lines next. Anytime you're adding more of your lines to the board, they must always be extending the current line that you have in play. For example, I could place this next piece here because it's extending this end of my line. 
but I could also have placed it here or really on any one of these streets. Or I could have extended the other end of my line here or on one of these streets. What you can't do is create a branch out of your current route. So placing it in this position would not be allowed. When placing, you can cross another player's line, but you cannot run parallel to their line. Aside from a couple of exceptions, which I'll explain by setting up some examples. If your line meets the end of another player's line, you can place a piece parallel with theirs there, even if you had other options. But now, if I want to add another piece to this end of my line, I cannot go here. I only got to do this before because the ends of our lines were meeting. This is not the end of their line. So I'd have to go here, say, or maybe here, or perhaps on the other end of my line. The other exception is if you have an end of your line that is totally blocked. In that situation, you can always build along another player's line, even if you're not meeting their line at one of their ends, or if you had other options that you could pursue. So in this case, I could go here. After that, though, if I wanted to extend my line from this end, I'd have to go here, 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 or even here as well, because in this case, my blue line is meeting the end of the purple player's line. Or, of course, I also have the option of extending from the other end of my line as well. If the ends of your line ever meet, creating a kind of loop, pick at which point they joined and then put one of your unused markers there as a reminder that when you place your next piece of line, it must extend from that position. And those are the rules for adding lines with the line expansion action. Next up, we have the buses action. The player who chose this, if any, adds one of their bus tokens underneath of their current buses here already. And if this creates a new maximum number of buses value, which in this case it does, a new maximum value of two, then that value goes into effect right away for all future actions like this one, passengers. Each token resolved from here allows that player to add a number of passengers from the supply to the board and the number of those passengers they get to add works just like the number of lines in the line expansion action. In other words, the player on the A space places the current maximum bus value of passengers, the B space adds one less, and so on. So in the situation we have here, the yellow player would go first and they would add two passengers to the board. Passengers are always added to either of these two train station spaces, and you can split the pieces you're adding between them in any way that you like. You do not need to have one of your lines connected to that train station space. The buildings action allows you to add buildings to the board, again based on the maximum bus value and the placement order. So in this case with a maximum bus value of two, the blue player will get to add one building and the yellow player will get to add two. If you're placing more than one building, you can choose any combination of types you like from the supply. Buildings are put on the numbered spaces of the board, but you must always cover the lowest numbered locations first. So early on, this means only the number one spaces will be available. Once they've all been filled in, the number two spots can be built on, and so forth. If a player chooses the clock action, they may choose to stop time. If they do, the clock hand stays exactly where it is, and the player takes one of these time stones and puts it in front of themselves. When there are no more time stones left on the clock, the players have messed with the space-time continuum too much. It ruptures, and the game ends immediately. You do not complete the next action, and instead head straight to final scoring. If no player chose the clock action, or if the person who did chooses not to stop time, then move the hand forward so that it points at the next building symbol in clockwise order. The vroom action is used to move passengers along your bus route to the buildings that they want to travel to, which is represented by the symbol that the clock is currently pointing at. So in this case, they want to go to work. First, you need to see if any passengers are already where they want to be. If a passenger is at a crossing that has a building of the right type, move that passenger onto that building. They won't be taking a bus this turn because they've already arrived. And keep in mind, each building can only hold one passenger. You should also keep an eye out here for any figures that are on the wrong type of building. Perhaps they were there from a previous round. You'll want to make sure that they're moved back onto the crossing. Unlike the previous actions, players resolving this action 
don't consider the maximum bus value. Instead, they can move as many passengers to the desired location as the number of buses that they have in this area. In other words, although the maximum bus's value right now is four, and this player is on space A, they only have two buses. So they will only be moving, at most, two passengers when resolving this token. The player here, yellow, can move three passengers. And then when it's blue's turn again, and they are resolving this token, they again get to transport two more passengers. To move a passenger, look at each one anywhere on your line that isn't currently at their desired building type, which in this case is work. And then pick one of those passengers to move to one of those buildings as long as there's an open one located somewhere on your line. For example, I could move this passenger to this work location or this one. I'll pick the one over here. You don't have to pick the closest space. Blue had two buses, so I could move one more passenger along their line, but there are no passengers that are already at their desired locations, so my action would have to end here. For each passenger you do move successfully, you score one point, moving your marker upwards one space on the track here. Once everyone has finished their rooming, it's time for the starting player action. If anyone chose this, give them the start bus token. They will be the first player for the next round. If no one shows this action, then whoever has the start bus token just passes it to the player on their left. After performing all the actions, take all the action markers off the board and return them to the box. Players won't be able to use them again this game, so make sure you always assign your actions wisely. If you place a lot of your action tokens early in the game, compared to the other players, you might run out of them. And when this happens, you will not be able to pick any more actions to be resolved for the rest of the game, and the other players will continue to take actions as normal. That said, if at the end of a round only one player has action markers left, or if there are no more empty numbered building spaces on the board, then the game ends. And don't forget, the game will also end immediately when the final time stone is used, which will cause that round's room action to be skipped. After all, you broke the space-time continuum. With a bus, apparently. However the game ends, you now check each player's score and subtract one point for each time stone that you collected. In the case of a tie, the tied player with the most stones wins. If there's still a tie, the tied player whose point disc is on the bottom of the point stack wins. This means they got to that score first. And that's how you play bus. If you have any questions about anything you saw here, feel free to put them in the comments below and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. You'll also find forums for discussion, pictures, other videos, and lots more over on the game's page at BoardGameGeek, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. And if you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like, subscribing, and clicking that little bell icon so you get a notification anytime we post a new video. But until next time, thanks for watching.